Now let's see how we can manipulate the inputs of a nested artboard using keys. Now once again, we have a parent artboard and here's our child artboard. And let's first look at the child artboard and see how it works. You can see down in the inputs panel, we have a number, a Boolean and a trigger. You'll notice on the right side in the inspector, we've exposed all of those inputs to our parent artboard. Now our state machine has three different layers, each one using a different input. The first layer uses the number. If we change the number, you'll see that the number in the circle will also change. The second layer utilizes the Boolean. This switches the off and on toggle. And finally, our third layer has a dot that every time we hit our trigger, you can see that it goes away and then comes back again. Now let's go back to our main artboard and use these exposed inputs. If we open up the inputs panel, you'll see that we have our nested artboard listed here, as well as all of the different inputs that we've exposed. In a previous video, we showed you how to manipulate these inputs using a listener. However, it's also possible to use keys. So let's go ahead and experiment with that. On this new timeline here, we can select our nested artboard and in the inspector, you'll see this little flyout menu and we have all of the different inputs that we can key. Let's start by keying the trigger. As you can see, when we hit the diamond, we have a key for our trigger appear on the timeline. Now, every time our playhead crosses over this diamond or the key, that trigger will fire off. Now this animation is already set to loop. So we'll go ahead and press play to see uh, how this works. As you can see, every time our playhead gets back to the beginning, the little circle disappears and reappears again, thanks to our trigger. Now, if we switch over to our state machine and play it, because that animation's playing, that trigger's also being fired over and over again, and we're getting the exact same effect. Now we can even go into the inputs panel and watch it trigger every time that uh, timeline starts over. Now let's go back to our timeline and key our Boolean. Now, unlike a trigger, we also need to dictate whether or not our Boolean is true or false. Right now we have it keyed for false, but if we wanted to key it to true, we could, for example, uh, either uh, click it here or we could move our playhead and then we can click that checkbox and now our Boolean is gonna be true. Now let's play the animation and see what happens. As you can see, every time our playhead gets to the end, our Boolean goes back to off until about halfway when it turns on again. Now, if we go back to our state machine and play our state machine, you're gonna see just like before, um, our Boolean is switching off and on as well as our trigger uh, repeatedly firing every time the state starts over. Now, there's one last thing to key and that's our number input. So let's go ahead and select our nested artboard again and set some keys. So we'll start by setting a key for the value of one. Now we can move our playhead forward and change this value to something else. So let's go to frame 50 and change it to two. And let's play our animation and see what happens. As you can see, we went from one to two, but it's not switching back and forth. So let's stop the animation and see what's happening. If you look at the number value as it moves between one and two, we're actually getting decimal points. And that's because we have a linear interpolation value set between the two. Now we could use this to our advantage if for um, instance, we had something that needs um, a number that's either greater than one or less than one. Um, but if we want to switch between uh, one, two, and three, we have to be exactly on one, two, or three. So how do we get this to work on our parent artboard? Well, we're gonna need to change our um, interpolation type from linear to hold. This should hold one at a whole number until we get to two. And then once we get to the end of the timeline, we should go back to one, which should change our number from one to two. As you can see, switching the interpolation fixed our problem. We're switching back and forth between our two numbers. Now let's add a third key and change the value to three. And let's not forget to change our interpolation type to hold. 
if we play the animation one more time, you'll see that all of our different things are working now. So our Boolean's working, our trigger's working, and now we have all the numbers working. And if we go to the state machine and play it, we'll make sure that all of these are translating over there as well. And once again, if we go to the inputs panel, you'll see that all of our inputs are changing. Now, this is a really simple example, but as you can see, the fact that we can key these inputs opens up a lot of possibilities for different types of animations.